The following is an Infinity One Productions presentation. Keeping it honest, insightful, interactive. Covering the latest in wrestling and beyond. You're listening to the RCWR Show with your host, Lee Sanders. Let's go on ahead. As y'all know, we got a new co-host. Let's go ahead and slide him on in. The one and only Diamond K. Diamond Brother, how you doing tonight? Oh, very good. Very good. Glad to be here. I thought maybe she might have had something to do with the whole thing going down. But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, um, yeah, Maryland, D.C., hopefully you all had celebrated that victory there. Baltimore Ravens, in case you might have missed it. I don't see how you could have missed it. Won the Super Bowl there. Good moment right there. I don't know, man. I would think that with this win, this now has the D.C. natives kind of having a little bit of second thoughts there about which team they should be rooting on. Come on over to the black and purple side is what I think. <laughs> yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Seriously, man, it just keeps going back and forth. Uh, all right, tonight, you know how we do it over here. We're talking about what had happened from Monday night's WWE Raw. We'll also talk about the very latest in wrestling-related news. Now, for those of you that subscribe to us on YouTube at the RCWR Show, you know y'all had got first crack as I went in-depth about Monday's Raw. So we're not going to go full in-depth uh, with what all had happened, as instead we're just going to cover key points that happened from last night's episode. And, Diamond, it's a good time for us to be doing this first night together. Um, I definitely want to pick your brain on this, of course. The biggest highlight of them all from Monday Night Raw was WWF legend Bruno San Martino, two-time WWF. WF champion, I don't know how many W's I put in there, but y'all get the point. Finally, after all these years, it seemed like it was something that was never going to happen. It happens. We finally see this guy take his rightful spot into the 2013 Hall of Fame. I definitely want to get your take on that when you first had heard that news, your initial reaction, and just overall uh, experience with this. Uh, I, I mean, you know, as you said, everyone knows, long time coming, uh, glad to see it finally happen, uh, and where better than Madison Square Garden, uh, pretty much where um, where it all went down for him. Uh, I forgot how many sellouts that he had, but uh, it was a whole lot of them. And, uh, you know, for him to go into the Hall of Fame, finally uh, solidifying this Hall of Fame, uh, no one more deserving than uh, Bruno San Martino. Definitely, definitely. And, I I mean, I would think that just with the current lineup that you have right now for the Hall of Fame, and there's probably at least maybe two, three more people that's going to be announced between now and the Elimination Chamber or between now and WrestleMania. I mean, it's shaping up to be a really solid card right now. I mean, we got the hardcore legend Mick Foley. We got Trish Stratus in there. We got the original American hero, Mr. Bob Becklin, and now we got Bruno San Martino in there. And, you know, it's just so funny because I just can remember as a little kid watching WWF at the time, and I can just remember how my parents, my grandparents, even my great grandparents, they would always tell me these stories that just sounded so legendary, and I'm sure you've probably heard them from time to time of, oh, you know, I remember guys like Bruno San Martino, Nature Boy, Buddy Rogers, uh, George the Animal Steel. I remember there was this real breed of wrestlers, and, you know, you hear about that, you know, and you get older, and you, you, once you start to really have a passion for wrestling, you, you find yourself backtracking to those yesterdays of wrestling. And, you know, to follow up on what I had said Monday night, you know, you just remember what all was going on at that time, Diamond, when Bruno was the champion. I mean, we had the whole segregation going on. Uh, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X was still alive. Uh, women was trying to get equal rights and workforce there. Uh, you know, so much stuff was happening during that time, but it seemed like Bruno San Martino for that 11-year reign that he had as champion, first reign lasting eight years, second reign, if I'm not mistaken, it lasted about, I think, uh, three years. You know, he had the people. It didn't matter if it was 
Japanese, uh, Jewish, uh, Russian, uh, black. It didn't matter. He had all of them for that long length of time, you know, ro- rooting him on, you know, the original Italian stallion. And, uh, you know, I can't help but look at this move. And for those of you that are a little bit curious, you know, how this was possibly pulled off. We have none other to thank than, wait for it, wait for it, the one and only Vice President of Talent Live Relations, Triple H, who has been aggressively negotiating with Bruno San Martino to get this deal struck. And, uh, Diamond, I thought this was very interesting because I actually had a guy that used to write for me on the website a couple of months back. I had touch bases with him again because he's actually close friends with Bruno San Martino. And as soon as I saw this happen Monday night, I reached out to him. I said, hey, man, you got you to gotta feed me a bone or something, man. You got to let me know what's, what's the 411 here. What happened? And <laughs> I had just yeah. checked this uh, email out. I literally just opened this up right before we came on the air here. He said, uh, bragging here, but I knew it was going to happen. I pretty much knew on Friday and definitely knew Sunday at halftime. He he followed it up saying he's going to try to give me a little bit more information, maybe possibly a statement from Mr. San Martino. Maybe we could kind of have something uh, forthcoming here. Who knows? Maybe we actually might be able to get him on the show. Keep your fingers crossed. But uh, I want to pick your brain on this. You know, by this move being done successfully by Triple H as this was just one of many pet projects that he has just put his hands on since he's come across more and more power here. Do you have a new appreciation for 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 Triple H? I can't help but ask you that. That's that's part one of the question. And the second part is seeing this move happen with Triple H. What do you think the future holds for him? Just overall. Uh, what does the future hold for Triple H? Yeah. Um, well, I, I mean, uh, I never, uh, I, I was not one of the people that bashed Triple H. Um, and, uh, you know, he has a lot of, of naysayers. Uh, and, uh, I, I mean, you know, when you look at someone's work, uh, everything that they do, of course, is not going to be uh, a super success. Uh, so there have been several things that, um, you know, Triple H you know, champion for, if you want to say, like, uh, I think he was um, a, a big supporter of Drew McIntyre's initial push. Um, of course, Sin Car as well. Uh, you know, I mean, some things good, some things bad, uh, but that goes with anybody. Uh, you know, Vince has had his share of, uh, you know, Duke the Dumpster Drosies and those type of uh, of characters, so everything hasn't been you know, 100%. Uh, but with this particular thing, uh, I think it's really, really good. And um, it had to be someone else to come in and really spearhead it because I didn't think Vince himself would be able to because, uh, from my understanding, Bruno uh, San Martino had so much, uh, you know, negative uh, feelings about the business. And I think he associates uh, Mr. McMahon with it so closely. So somebody coming in, kind of like a, a third party almost, and uh, uh, so, uh, definitely a student of game, if you will, uh, in Triple H. I, I think that that's really uh, one of the reasons that it happened and um, dealt with his respect for traditional wrestling and that type of stuff. I think that's why it happened. So, I mean, my hats definitely go off uh, to uh, Triple H. Yeah, hands down. I, I have to agree with you 100% on that one. And, you know, Bruno San Martino and Triple H, they both had gave brief comments on this. And uh, I want to read you just in part of what Bruno had to say about this. And he said, direct quotes right here, Triple H contacted me and started telling me things that had changed and everything that was going on with WWE. I started watching it after talking to him, and when I saw it, I was very impressed. Of course, Bruno San Martino would also note that at the time when he had last tuned in to WWE, it was going into that whole attitude era stuff, and people left and right were being associated with the steroid scandal. So for him to really be one of those old-school type of wrestlers that didn't need to rely on enhancement drugs, just go hit the weights, eat right, and all that good stuff for him to see at that point what the product was becoming, he kind of just took that step back and uh, didn't want to have anything to do with it. 
And, uh, you know, it should be noted that Bruno San Martino, he's gone on record many times, most recently as at least three months ago, that, you know, he just didn't see himself going into the Hall of Fame, that he had a problem with the product. So, you know, you kind of have that going in the back of your head when you hear that, oh, you know, I just started watching the product again, and I like, you know, let's be for real here, WWE, they've been PG now for a good couple of years. This isn't something that just happened overnight. You know, they, they've been giving us the same stuff for a good while now. And uh, I want to read you what Triple H had said. Triple H, uh, very, very interesting points that he made right here. Uh, I love the history of this business. Without the history, there is no tomorrow. To look back on the history of WWE, one of the most important figures in the long story of where this all came from wasn't recognized, and that was Bruno. So Triple H really having that mindset and, and knows without a doubt that you can't really have a WWE Hall of Fame, especially in New York. Without the guy that, for me, and as I'm sure a lot of fans would say, this guy should have been the first inductee into the WWE Hall of Fame. And uh, I want to just let you guys know, it looks like this is going to be part of some type of a package. Uh, For those of you that might not know, it looks like this isn't just going to be for the Hall of Fame induction. It looks like a plan has been worked out with this contract for him uh, in a way where he's going to be doing commentary on DVDs, uh, appearances on TV shows from time to time. Looks like he may even be involved in the 50th anniversary DVD that WWE is planning on producing. Um, So, you know, recap again, looks like Triple H has been doing this for about seven months now with the uh, negotiations with Bruno, nailed this. Um, it seems like, Diamond, everything Triple H has been touching as of late, it's been gold. I mean, he's got Bruno. A little bit before that, uh, we've been hearing the rave reviews that he's been getting, uh, being the man behind NXT. Uh, from time to time, whenever Vince McMahon needs to step away, go on the road, and Hunter is left in charge of Raw and SmackDown, the shows just run more smoothly, you hear how the morale is more up, everybody is just loose and can really just have fun doing their job when Hunter is in charge, uh, definitely kind of lets you know that the company is going to be in pretty good hands once Vince McMahon decides, and God knows when it's going to happen, but you know, you're kind of getting the impression here that the company is going to be in good hands once Vince McMahon definitely. you know, does decide to give the power to Hunter. Definitely, and um, you know it, it's ironic that uh, that Hunter and Stephanie are are the ones that's really going to take the company uh, into the next era. Uh, I always thought that it would be Shane and Stephanie, uh, but it's ironic that that it's actually uh, Triple H and uh, and Stephanie McMahon. Yeah, yeah, and you know, folks, while we're still talking about Triple H, I, Diamond, I definitely want to pick your brain on this, and for those of you that haven't heard this, you may find this to be very interesting. Um, I couldn't help but listen to the audio earlier today, and uh, Bret Hart, WWE Hall of Famer there, he had some very, very interesting words to say uh, about Triple H, the wrestler, and um, Diamond, I don't know if you've heard this. Uh, I just want to play. I uh, have, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I just want to play a, a snippet yeah. for those that that didn't hear this. It, it's a, it's a good piece. Uh, it's about uh, four minutes, maybe a little less than that. I just want to play that, and then Diamond, I just want to give you the ball and run with it. I definitely want to, you know, get your thoughts on this. Uh, so let's go ahead and Absolutely. let that play. All right, this is again Bret Hart, and uh, he's giving his thoughts on Triple H, the wrestler. You need to describe the the. the time when Paul of Triple H came into the company trained by Kelly Kowalski. His journey is quite incredible really when you think of where he is now in the company. I mean, is, is that a wrestling success story? I, you tell me. I don't know. I don't know how you summarize that. Um, you know, I, I, I have um, a, a, a certain amount of respect for, for Triple H. When I remember when he first came in, I um, I remember complimenting on, on stuff that he did. He was, I usually give wrestlers my thoughts on what they, you know, and try to help them and stuff. But I can remember when, I, when Paul first came in, I remember talking to him and saying, you really, 
do a lot of really nice stuff out there, and I really kind of—he was—he was always a very good wrestler. Sean, or Sean, not Sean, but Triple H was always a good wrestler. But great—I don't know what is he, one thousand time world champion now, or you know, like I don't know, like how great really is he? Well, how great are any of them these days when the titles change hands? So well, even like I look at Punk. I can look at certain wrestlers and I go, this guy is an innovator, like a Rey Mysterio can come up with. He's done stuff that nobody ever thought of before. Uh, Punk has done stuff that really unique moves, and, and you go, geez, I've never seen anything like that before. And they do things that are, they innovate all the time, and they create new sequences of moves and things that, and like I said before, a little tip your nod your hat to, you know, I'm going to do the all off second row for Bret Hart today and that kind of stuff. But you see this talent out there sometimes, and then you look at someone like Triple H, and um, I know I love when I look at him. He's he's always had a good look as far as his body went. You know, he always had a pretty muscular physique. But you look at someone like Hunter, and you go, "What has he ever really done? Like, what is he one move that he ever created that nobody ever saw before?" Um, some high spots or an idea for a match or I got this idea or you know I don't know what he ever brought to the table he's mostly a guy that showed up and they've made him mm. he's always been a decent wrestler I would consider him a, a pretty good wrestler and pretty talented but great I don't know I don't think so and if he's running the show it goes back to my whole argument before you got guys that are telling everyone what to do what has he ever done that's great. Like, he's never had a great match, I don't think, ever. Whenever I look at Triple H's matches, including the last one he had with Undertaker, and I don't really mean it as a knock, but I told myself before I watched it, because I'm trying to like Paul now these days, but I go, I want to see him do something to make me think, yeah, he's he's got greatness in him. But I, before Triple H wrestled Undertaker last year, was that last year? I remember watching it and going, I can picture the whole match in my head before I can tell you exactly what this match is going to be like and how it's going to go. And I remember watching it and it was exactly like I predicted. Like it was exactly mostly brawling, mostly brawling around on the floor and doing stuff that a lot of times that is pretty easy wrestling. That's just walking around, running somebody into the wall. And, you know, it's not really, it's not complicated. It's right. not. There's no genius behind it. Maybe they couldn't. Maybe they were limited because of the type of match they were in. Mm -hmm. But I just thought you're both supposed to be these great wrestlers, and Undertaker is a great wrestler. Let's see you deliver it. And I thought um, I thought it was mediocre at right. best, and maybe a four out of ten or three out of ten. Okay. And it's, whereas uh, guys like Punk go out there and it's like, okay, impress me, mm -hmm. and they do. And you watch it and you go, that's that's good stuff that's stuff I never thought of before and it's unique and it's fresh and I think um, I don't know I don't want to say but I, I think Paul is a little overrated right. he's overrated for being great but he, I can't sit here and tell you that I can name one match that I ever thought he ever had with anybody that was great mm -hmm. no, that's good a lot of good matches and it's kind of a shame he, did, he should have a great match somewhere with somebody and you'd think he would have had it by now but I don't think he's a great wrestler and um, that's just my thoughts on it and that was WWE Hall of Famer Bret Hitman Hart who actually had just had surgery on his leg I believe it was yesterday we definitely want to wish him a speedy recovery over here Diamond your thoughts oh wait uh, Diamond sorry about that Diamond go ahead your thoughts yeah, first I, I want to say that uh, Hitman has always had this thing about him where he takes things a little bit too serious. Um, I think he was guilty of that with his with his own gimmick, his own his own character. Uh, now wanting to lose the title uh, in Canada, what you know, all of that kind of stuff. So, um, with that being said. Uh, he does not like Triple H. 
and that's clear. Uh, and he does not like Shawn Michaels. You know, uh, I mean, he's buried the hatchet, uh, but these are not two people that he likes. Uh, with that being said, clearly his comments were personal. Um, Triple H's match with Undertaker was a great match. Uh, the the series of matches that he had with Shawn Michaels were great matches. Um, Triple H has had great matches. Um, and uh, I guess I disagree with, and I and I like the Hitman. Uh, I disagree with his definition of a great wrestler. I don't think that a great wrestler has to innovate. Um, you know, be one of those type of wrestlers that innovate moves. Um, I consider Ric Flair to be the greatest wrestler of all times. Um, and uh, I, you know, you can do things great and not innovate it. I don't, you know, I mean, so I just, dis, I disagree with, with that aspect of it. I, I mean, you know, Ray Mysterio, of course, uh, interviewed a lot of moves and punk, as he said. Uh, but if you want to put Hitman himself up to the same criteria that he held triple H to, I don't really know what moves or, you know, innovations that, uh, the Hitman made, <laughs> you know, so, uh, um, but you know, with that with that being said, uh, I do think that um, he's not uh, Triple H is not the greatest wrestler of all times. Uh, he's not even in the conversation uh, for the greatest of all times. But you know, I, I would say that I, I mean, you know, you have different levels. He's not a scientific wrestler. I, I think that his his is more in the psychology, uh, you know, aspect of it. Triple H, that is, uh, whereas though Hitman was uh precise um you know in in his execution but just like John Cena uh the hitman you know had a handful of moves that he did um and and that is that's a fact uh but uh, I think he was a little hard yeah I was kind of picking the same vibe but myself you know I was trying to be as unbiased as possible as I was listening to that and, you know, like you, I, I love Bret Hitman Hart. I, I love Triple H. You know, I can remember very vividly being one of those passionate fans that used to boo at the TV uh, screen every single time Triple H was winning the title and he was retaining it every single freaking pay-per-view. And I'm saying to myself, you know, no, we need a new champion. I'm tired of Triple H. You know, I, I remember that period there where it just seemed like it was just nothing – with Triple H, beginning of Raw, you get Triple H. In the middle of Raw, you get Triple H. Uh, towards the end of the show, you get Triple H. Overrun, you get Triple H. And, you know, it was just one of those field days for, like, an entire week. It was, you know, pretty much that period there where it was the Triple H show. So, you know, <laughs> I went through all of that stuff. And, you know, to see, you know, I, I don't, I think those are kind of, strong words to sit up and say, you know, I can't really think about some really great matches that he had. You know, like you said, uh, the ma series of matches that he had with Shawn Michaels, I mean, you could pull up any one of those. My personal favorite uh, would definitely have to be the one at SummerSlam, what was that, 2002, uh, no sanctioned match. Uh, that that was phenomenal. Um, yeah, it's cool. You, you know, I even liked what he did briefly with Goldberg. I thought that was like – one of the most interesting rivalries that Goldberg had, really, for the entire time that he was in the WWE, uh, though it was very brief. I, I thought what he did with him was on point. Um, you know, you want to talk about um, uh, being innovative. I like how he kind of did his own little version of the Four Horsemen. He had Evolution, which pretty much was the platform to launch the careers of Batista, uh, Randy Orton. Look where those guys are now. They're doing pretty damn well for themselves, uh, especially Batista, turned MMA fighter, uh, movie star. What was that movie he had uh, that just now hit DVD, Man with the Iron Fist? Uh, you know, that has been getting brave reviews. Um, you know, there's a lot of good matches that you can pull out of Triple H and be like, you know, he, he, he's done some pretty damn good matches. And um, there does kind of seem to be a little bit of of uh, negative energy there. It kind of sounds like him and Hunter haven't really squashed everything, so to speak. And I, I hope that time comes 
where it does happen. But, you know, Diamond, I wonder if maybe some of this might really be stemming from the way he's been utilized on Raw the past few times that he's appeared. I mean, let's be honest, it really hasn't been the greatest of moments for him. Um, One of the last times he popped up, I believe he had refereed a match just recently. We saw him trying to do his damnedest to pull over, uh, put over uh, Alberto Del Rio. Um, Of course, you know, he kind of has his own set ways you know, he's one of those type of guys, you know, he it, the spotlight has to be on him. He has to, you know, be able to milk off of, you know, that five, ten seconds of camera time because he's Brett Hitman. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, but the, the thing about it is, is that the times when he has been utilized, his performances haven't been that good. Uh, I mean, if you want to go back to the, his WrestleMania Moment with uh, Vince McMahon. I, I mean, that was not, you know, and, and I understand that, you know, all that he's been through and everything, but, um, you know, I mean, if, the performances that he's put in uh, have justified him being used in the way that he has been. Uh, nothing made me pop more. Well, I, there's been things that made me pop more, but I popped big time. Uh, when Shawn Michaels suit kicked him uh, when he was in that wheelchair, uh, that yeah. was a good performance there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that that was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, another highlight that we saw from uh, Raw this past Monday night, um, we saw the return of the Silverback, Mark Henry. Uh, I definitely want to get your thoughts on that. I mean, you know, Mark Henry, that is just Always one of my favorite guys, one of the most underrated guys uh, I felt on the WWE roster. I was so ecstatic when they had made him the World Heavyweight Champion uh, a couple of years back there. Seemed like that man was just on one impressive run, and then he had the had nagging injury that sidelined him all this time. If you saw the pictures, you knew that he had got himself down to pretty damn good shape. I mean, he had looked the best I've seen him since probably his WWF debut. And then we see him this past Monday night. Um, good, strong return, but what happened to all that hard work, man? You had shed off at least 40, 50 pounds. You come back, you look out of shape, you look out of breath. Um, you look like you're about to have another injury any moment now. Um, what was your take in seeing Mark Henry return? Uh, well, I mean, I thought it was a good return. I thought it was, I thought it was pretty strong. Um, I mean, you know, he's going to have ring rust on him, uh, even though he didn't, uh, do anything, but, you know, some finishers or, you know, some power moves on a couple of guys. Um, I, I did notice that, um, he caught, uh, uh, Daniel Bryan's head on the, um, uh, you know, on the barriers, uh, when he threw him. So I don't, I don't know how. You know whether uh, uh, DV has a concussion or what, but um, you know that aside. I mean, I, I thought it was a really strong return. I thought that uh, he's believable in this role. I, I like it much better than even though the sexual chocolate was entertaining. I think that he's better suited for this role. Uh, I believe him, yeah, and um, and I think everybody, uh, definitely the ones uh, watching, uh, believe him as well. Do you think that? He can never get back to that point of Definitely. holding the world heavyweight title again. Definitely. I mean, there were a lot of naysayers that didn't believe that he he could put over uh, that gimmick because of how he had been used in the past when he got uh, the opportunity initially. And um, I, uh, you know, I had my doubts, and uh, and he got it over. Uh, Definitely, and and it was believable. Um, that's something that that they need um you know i i just i don't think that uh a match between say uh him and Ryback or uh him and Brock Lesnar would be a good one um <clears throat> so you know you have to keep him away from those type of people but you put you know put him in the ring with the Rey Mysterio or Sin Cara uh he's going to really really look good um uh, Dolph Ziggler uh could you know you could you could have a pretty good match with him um yeah. Uh, you know, Ziggler, Babyface. I, I mean, uh, definitely uh, he needs to be on SmackDown. And uh, I definitely uh, think that uh, he's coming for El- Elboto Dario. 
Well, let me ask you this, and, and this was the question that I had on my mind, and, and you, you touched a good nerve there, by the way, because it, it's perfect setup right here. You know, why is it that a guy like Mark Henry, who we have seen with the sexual chocolate gimmick and he's been involved in some of the most silliest comedic moments in WWE history, May Young, Hand, hello everybody. You know, why is it that a guy like Mark Henry is able to get over with this strong demeanor of this whole Hall of Pain gimmick, but then you look at a guy like Tensai, who had the whole hip hop hippo going on? He had the Prince Albert gimmick going on. Why is it that you know Tenzai? He comes back into the company. He's redubbed as this mean streak of a guy that has been a internet uh, correction, a uh, international sensation over in Japan, um, just being a beast of a man over there. And he's just not able to get over with the WWE Universe. And now as a result of that, we see that he has now kind of gone back to his hip-hop hippo days there. It looks like he's going to be pairing up with Brodus Clay. And that should be a very interesting tag team in itself. Why is it that he can't go over with a serious gimmick, but Mark Henry can? And, I mean, these two guys, they're almost on the uh, same level when you, when you compare their track record. Well, I mean, <clears throat> you know, when he put the lingerie on, I saw that uh he was that was the start of his baby face turn and uh and it's 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 kicking in the gear now. Uh he wanted to be more successful, uh Tensai, uh, probably soon to be Albert again, um in this role than in the uh the role that they had him in. Uh I, two two reasons. I don't think that uh that the the Asian Orient character works. Um uh, I think it's gonna be many years before we can go back to to that role. I mean if you look at uh it just doesn't work here in the US. Um I mean I mean there was there were several different attempts that they made at doing a gimmick like that um you know on SmackDown and none of them worked. Um so that that's the first one. Uh the second thing is is that it's Albert. So it's you know, you can see that it's Albert. Um it's just like, you know, when they had the Iron Sheik come back and, and they called him, you know, Mustafa. I mean it's just it but it's the Iron Sheik and there's nothing different and they're just calling him something else. I mean I think that whenever you do that it, it insults the people's intelligence uh and it automatically does not allow them to get into the character that you know that's trying to be portrayed. If if, if Zack Ryder comes back dressed as Zack Ryder, but they're calling him something else, everybody's going to continue to call him Zack Ryder, and and, and you know so it's that's the thing that he's suffering from. Uh, with Mark Henry, with Mark Henry, uh, I think that he is more talented than Tensai and able to get over this role by facial expressions. Uh and I think that the role that they have him playing now is him. You know, just turned up. Uh and I think that the other roles he was playing they were fun, but uh you know, they they weren't, you know, they they seemed like roles. This seems like it's really him. And when you pair that with the fact that he was playing so many silly roles and now this is the frustration of the character you know, for 15, 16 years playing those silly roles, it makes it even more believable. Hmm. Okay. Okay. I agree with you on that one, 100%. Um, obviously, who was missing from Raw last Monday night was the People's Champion, The Rock. Uh, we had put a update up for you guys on our Facebook page as he had interacted uh, with a fan. The fan was telling him, hey, where were you? Raw just isn't the same without you. Rock letting it be known that he was doing a little bit of touring, but that he would be back on Raw next Monday night. Uh, he's also going to be at the SmackDown tapings as well. Uh, now we're getting the word of how Raw had did uh, ratings-wise uh, from this past Monday night. Let me see if I can pull it up uh, for you guys. I believe we have it. Uh, actually, no, it looks like I don't have it, unfortunately. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. I believe Raw had pulled in a 3.58 rating this week. Uh, good number, 
not as high as last week, which I believe was a three point uh, sixty eight. So obviously, you know, Diamond with the Rock uh, coming in last week and he was able to bring in that massive amount of audience with him. Obviously, you had a good number of people that tuned in uh, to Raw this past Monday night. Probably were expecting to see him again. Or you probably had a uh, new uh, set of audience there that kind of liked what they saw with the product, wanted to see what was happening a little more. But, you know, Raw was kind of a uh, a little bit of a lackluster episode, but it had a couple of special perks in there. Um, do you think at this point, with the way the ratings are, would you expect WWE to continue aggressively to try to work out more appearances from The Rock uh, leading up into WrestleMania? Or do you think that with the way things are right now with him, where it looks like we're going to be seeing him on a set of Raw and SmackDown episodes one week, and maybe he might be gone one, two weeks, do you think that current arrangement might be okay? I think it's fine. Um, you know, the G.I. Joe movie uh, comes out, uh, I believe, right before uh, WrestleMania. Um, you know, you have Emanation Chamber coming up in a few weeks. I'm expecting that The Rock will be there these next couple weeks, uh, then Elimination Chamber, uh, and probably the day after, then take some time, you know, a couple weeks off and then back. Uh, but The Rock is all the way in, uh, you know, I didn't get a chance to tell you my opinion on that promo that he cut at the Royal Rumble, uh, which was a very Dusty Rhodes-inspired uh, promo, but uh, he knocked that out of the park. He's all the way in, um, and, and from from that standpoint, he's giving better performances than he's given uh, his two prior um, you know, returns. Yeah, I, I agree 100%, and, and I would just like to add to that, you know, we, I see what you guys put on YouTube, and I just have to say it, it just frustrates me to no end. Diamond, I don't know if you've seen this, but we had just saw like a sea of people take the YouTube after Raw went off the air. Yeah, yeah, Rocky, where was y'all's people's champion? Where was The Rock, huh? Huh? He don't care about WWE. The ten, fifteen minute rants. I didn't even sit through any of that crap. But, you know, this is my whole thing with this. I think WWE is in a really good spot right now. I mean, if you're going to have the belt leave the company for a couple of weeks, who better than The Rock? As Diamond, you pointed out, and as we pointed out last week, The Rock is going to have one hell of a schedule. I mean, this guy's got, like, movies coming out once a month all the way up until at least the end of summer. And just the fact that he's able to squeeze in the WWE on a constantly uh, revolving schedule, I mean, I just think that's just mad props in itself. And he's really just doing this for the love of the business. It's just his way of giving back to the fans. I've said it time and time again. I'll say it again. He doesn't need the WWE financially. The man is good to go. He, He doesn't need them. This is really just about him giving back. It's not about promoting his movies. Uh, He's even let it be known countless times that that's not even the reason why he's back in the WWE. And uh, quite honestly, I'm still just amazed. 40 years old, he's able to still have the audience in the palm of his hand. I mean, that just really speaks uh, for itself. And uh, I want to pick your brain on this. We heard the rumblings here. We continue to hear them. It looks like Undertaker is having second doubts about uh, wrestling at this year's Mania. Uh, And if that is the case, it looks like a key program may not go down between CM Punk and Taker. Um, Sounds like Undertaker is a lot more banged up than what we were led to believe initially. Uh, as you know, we were kind of under the impression maybe he does have one more match in him, uh, but he's so banged up. Uh, what do you see happening with CM Punk if a scenario occurs where they're not able to put the title? And let, let's be for real, we know it's not going to happen, but you know, but you know, we still got to kind of put a little doubt out there, you know, uh, you know. But the way it's looking right now, CM Punk probably won't get the title back from The Rock at Elimination Chamber. Where no. is CM Punk's big money draw for for Mania? Well, you know, um, there's two schools of thought. Um, 
realistically, uh, I would say they have two options. One option, uh, option A, being three-way match between Cena um, and and uh, The Rock uh, and Punk. Uh, that's I think that's option A. Uh, and option B would be some type of uh, match with uh, Ryback. Ryback, you think he's ready? I mean, Mania. Well, I, I mean, Ryback, Ryback, they're definitely priming him. He's definitely going to be a part of WrestleMania, um, and so you, you know, you either, you either have the Ryback uh, match with with the Shield some type of way, or you have Punk. Uh, that is unresolved. Uh, once the Rock uh, beats CM Punk in this rematch, then where do you go? So, you know, he, he's going to have to do the blame game. He's going to have to, you know, um, the, the whole shield thing has to dismantle. Uh, I think that, um, you know, some type of stipulation match with Ryback, uh, I'm not saying that that's, of course, nearly as, as good as The Undertaker. Uh, but from a storyline standpoint, you know, you can't just start a, a fresh new program in February. So uh, he has to go with what's already been on the table. Uh, Ryback makes sense. Um, or three-way makes sense. Uh, I like the three-way uh, actually uh, because they were, you know, they were calling the once-in-a-lifetime thing and and all of that. And uh, this way you get you get a rematch, uh, but you but it's up one, and uh, you know you get a three-way dance and and. Um, the Rock is not in necessarily the best ring shape himself, uh, so a three-way match would work to The Rock's advantage, um, and uh, you know, give Punk that moment. Um, it just, to me is a win-win uh, if if you can't get the Undertaker uh, match, which I think is going to happen though. You know, I would hope that if the Undertaker is going to come back. It counts where it's needed the most I say unless you're going to have him lose It really doesn't make no sense for him to just keep coming back Putting his body out there on the limb You know, just let him ride off into the sunset with his streak already And, you know, nobody will hold it against him Definite future Hall of Famer, no doubt You know, but I don't want to keep seeing him come back year after year after year you know, I don't want to see him have a case like Terry Funk. <laughs> you know, he he just doesn't know when to hang it up. And um, but I agree with you. You know, they need to go that that triple threat route. I mean, you already got some history there. Uh, John Cena, he said it best himself. What was it two weeks ago? Uh, he could either go with The Rock, a, a man that he was supposed to beat uh, at WrestleMania last year. He came up short, or he could take on CM Punk if it so happens to be him holding the title, uh, as he's just never been able to beat CM Punk past several times he's come across him. A um, lot of history in there. You know, they're already dubbing the Rock versus John Cena uh, once in a year uh, <laughs> type of uh, gimmick. So, yeah, I think <laughs> they should definitely add another one in there. At least it kind of looks a little, you know, hey, this could actually go. Either way, don't make it look so obvious that John Cena is going to get the title uh, right back. Uh, you know, we were talking about who was missing from Raw Monday night. You know, another guy that was very noticeable that I thought was kind of, ha huh, was Dolph Ziggler. Now, we heard that he ended up doing a match uh, against Cena after Raw went off the air. Bit of a dark match. But he apparently didn't make the script for Raw, which, as always, you know, you, you hear this, Raw constantly gets uh, rewritten several times, hours, sometimes minutes before coming on the air. Here was a case right here where the writers, they just basically didn't have room for Dolph Ziggler. Uh, Diamond, I definitely got to get your thoughts on this, because when I heard this, I, I'm, I'm kicking back, I'm saying to myself, Okay, this is a guy that is the Money in the Bank winner. This is a guy that is supposed to be your future world heavyweight champion, and you just ran out of room to squeeze him in. I mean, let's be for real. We really didn't need that big show 
Alberto Del Rio hotel thing. Although the brawl was nice, you know, in the hotel room, that was that was a nice little em- environmental. I was feeling that kind of nice to see a little bit of SmackDown funk kind of cross over to Raw. I like that, but we really didn't need you know all that stuff. Well, well, what's your thoughts on seeing them uh, drop the ball there with Dolph Ziggler? Well, I, I mean, I, I have to say I, I'm coming at it from another angle. I, I didn't really have a problem with it. I honestly didn't miss him um, this one week. I, I think that it was, I think it was fine to have him off, and I think it'd be refreshing to have him back on next week. Uh, they had a lot of of points they needed to hit, and I, I think I, I think they really do need to get that um, that world title over more because eventually. Very soon, I think probably within this year, they're going to unify these titles. Uh, so we need to elevate that title a little bit more. Um, and and there, you know, it's, it's too too many occasions where that world title is not presented at all. Uh, so they got a little extra extra shine this week. Uh, we need they need to recap the uh, you know the Vent saga a lot and, and the and the Bruno. Um, and, and then the whole interactive thing. I mean, it was just, it, even within a three-hour show, there wasn't enough room for him. Uh, so that I mean, it's you know, it, you don't we don't see everybody every week. Um, I thought it was nice that we didn't see Tina as much, um, you know, this week either. So I, I really didn't have a problem with it. Now, I mean, if it's just two weeks straight, I have a problem with that. But uh, one week here or there uh, is not a big extremely big deal there's a uh there's a famous uh role-playing game uh that i'm sure a lot of you gamers out there have probably come across in your time uh, it's called final fantasy and uh, i thought it was very interesting a little joke here uh there's a uh follower of, of ours he posted this picture up and he said if you look closely dolph ziggler biggie langston aj lee they look like barrett cloud Tiffany from Final Fantasy Seven, and I said, <laughs> I said, I said, go go ahead. I, I know you. And he actually had the nerve to pull up a picture. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with that game. I I try to see if I could put the picture up on Facebook, but I thought it was kind of funny there. Um, yeah, I mean, one week is fine. Okay, but let's talk about you know that's 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 that guy. But well, what about Wade Barrett? I mean, come on now. We see this guy on one serious funk. He's being made to look like a paper champion right now i mean he's just been getting his ass handed to him left and right uh we see him working with uh nxt up and comer bo dallas and uh, i thought this was you know very weird um this past monday night we see bo dallas cut this promo and you know i'm thinking to myself as i'm seeing this and as i'm seeing them (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm seeing them recap the beating that he took and all that. I mean, he just comes on, and it just went in one ear and out the other as I'm watching him just cheesing. And he's like, you know, oh, you know, <laughs> you know, he kind of reminded me of Jerry Lewis there in, in, in that movie, The uh, the Nutty Professor. He just had a goofy look on it. And I'm saying to myself, okay, I don't know about you, but if I got my ass handed to me by Wade Barrett, you know, I would be, you know, in front of the camera, Wade Barrett, I remember what you did to me last week on SmackDown, and I just want to let you know I haven't forgotten, and sooner or later, I'm going to be coming for you. You and me, we're not done by a long shot. Not that lame, you know, <laughs> and then, you know, I don't like ripping into the WWE booking here, but I thought they dropped the ball big time with Wade Barrett as he was taking on Randy Orton. Now, you know what? I'm fine with Wade Barrett losing if that's what you want to have him do. But don't you think it would have made a little bit of sense to have Bo Dallas come out after he got his butt beat on SmackDown, okay? Come out, kind of interfere in the match, costing Wade Barrett the, 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 the win to continue that little rivalry that they had kicked off at the Royal Rumble. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's you know, this is definitely not uh, the problem with this push. They're, they're trying to to do a spin on, you know, the one two three kid push, uh, but you know, you don't feel for, you know, you don't feel for Bo Dallas at all. You don't connect with him, uh, and and I think that's the problem. Uh, his promos definitely uh, was you know didn't didn't help his case at all. Mm-hmm. No doubt, no doubt. 
um, Brock Lesnar F5-ing Miz. But that chair was the real story. That chair got its 15. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that that was serious. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was pretty serious. I, I, um, I, I haven't seen anybody throw a chair with that kind of accuracy uh, ever. <laughs> Brock Lesnar, man, he he, you gonna get down with him? You you better be prepared. I mean, two solid weeks now, he has literally hurt some people. Um, I, that chair had it's. I had to rewind that a couple of times and just see that chair. Yeah, I watched that, that a couple of times myself. <laughs> and uh, it was funny because if you look closely at Miz's face, it's kind of like. Man, why are you hit me with the chair? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I know, right? <laughs> it was. You felt sorry for him. You felt. You really felt sorry for him. And Brock doesn't care. He's just. He's. He's not breaking character at all. You know. So. How are you enjoying Brock Lesnar? I mean, you know, if you've been a Brock Lesnar fan, this is really something that you can find to be pretty cool right now. Because remember, the same time last year, we were kind of hearing those complaints there where folks were saying, you know, yeah, Brock Lesnar's back, but, you know, he's taking on the main event guys. He's taking on guys that he's probably, you know, he's already brought with before in the past. He's taking on Triple H or, you know, he's messing with John Cena. You know, when's he going to mess with the newer guys? You know, it was, I don't know about you, but it was kind of refreshing to see him work uh, with somebody new in the Miz. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm definitely a Brock Lesnar fan, um, and, and I like how they're portraying him. Um, I, I really, to me, you can tell that he's going to be there long term because they're giving him a lot more uh, now than they gave him, you know, in the past. Uh, the, you know, his, his his year, you know, I guess a year earlier. Or so, um, I like it. Uh, I like where they're going with it. Uh, I think Paul Heyman is, um, you know, is uh, is really, really doing good work. I mean, some of the during some of the action uh, last night, uh, <laughs> Paul Heyman was just saying, you know, uh, he's sorry, Miz, he's you know, Miz is sorry, or you know, some kind of funny yeah. things that he was saying uh, uh, to Brock Lesnar to try to, you know, quote unquote, calm him down, which I just think is. You know the way he's portraying it as uh, you know not being able to have any control over Brock Lesnar is really really a good dynamic and it's a nice spin on the whole thing. Where does this go? I mean, we got the Elimination Chamber and then after that it's pretty much WrestleMania time. It's time to start building up those main event matches. You know, we can call it right now. It's definitely going to be Triple H taking on Brock Lesnar. But what do you yeah. see is going to be that final straw that's going to make Triple H come back? I mean, at this point, is a Stephanie McMahon needed to appear to try to get in the face of Brock Lesnar because <laughs> I hope he hurt not. his daddy? She could try that smack on Brock Lesnar, and uh, I don't know how well that's going to go. She might get hit with a chair or something. I mean, I don't know. Uh, but uh, unfortunately for Miz, uh, he's going to have to be the sacrificial lamb. And uh, he's going to have to get beat down. And um, quite possibly Stephanie coming out could do it. Uh, but, I mean, you know, I, I think it's more so about why would Stephanie come out. Uh, we have to get to that point. Why would Stephanie come out? Uh, it's definitely not going to be for the Miz. Right. Well, the way I'm yeah. picturing it in my head, and it's just that part of me that, that likes to think from a writing standpoint. I, Lord knows I spend too much time writing as it is. you know. But, but there's that part of me that can kind of see Stephanie McMahon popping up to act on behalf of Vince McMahon and the board of directors to try to lay down some type of ruling on Brock Lesnar. Maybe she'll like try to... Uh, let him know that his contract is no longer valid, you know, he's done with the company or whatever. I wonder if WWE can even just picture this thought for a moment. Now, we got to keep in mind they're PG friendly now, but I wonder with WrestleMania season around the corner, I'm just picturing the perfect setup for Triple H. We see Brock Lesnar do the unthinkable. He F5s Stephanie. And, um, you know, if, if for those of you that thought that Brock Lesnar F5 and Vince was good, Y'all would be just amazed at seeing Stephanie get F5'd. 
you know, I'm trying to think of what is going to be that that pulse button that's going to make Triple H say, you know what, you might have kicked my ass before, but I'm coming for you. I don't care. You and me, one more time, I want you. Well, you know, uh, the thing about it is is that um, their match was not at WrestleMania. Uh, that was after WrestleMania, right? Was right. that SummerSlam? Uh, SummerSlam. Um, yeah, so, I, I mean, I think that part is cool. Uh, I, I'm not... I'm not feeling the F5-ing of Stephanie uh, in this environment, uh, but maybe getting her up for the move might be good. Uh, I think that, you know, actually performing the move might be a little bit too much. Um, and uh, he's 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 not Goldberg with the moves, but he's he's pretty darn close uh, uh, as far as hurting people. Yeah, he um, definitely I, hurt her. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. I mean, the way that uh, Vince landed, you can really see uh, if he already didn't have some ailments uh, that he probably would have acquired some after that uh, F5 that he got last week. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Yeah, I, I think for today's, you know, for the today's WWE product, you know, as much as I think that would be really cool to see, I, I just have concern that they wouldn't be able to go there. You know, and it would make all the sense in the world. And I mean, you know, let's not forget. And for those of you that's kind of like, oh my God, why would you even suggest that Stephanie gets put in that type of a position? Let's remember, folks. You know, for those of you that might not know, you know, Stephanie, you know, she's spent a little bit of time in the ring as well. She's taken a few bumps. Right. You know, um, right. I think one of the, her her best moments was when she was just getting uh, her butt handed to her by Vinnie Mac there. Um, a couple of years back, I can't remember the circumstances for it, but he took her on. It was either that or uh, she'd get fired or something like that. And I think she ended up getting fired either way. Um, <laughs> but, you, you, you know, she could take the bumps, but I don't think with today's product it would be the – it probably wouldn't be the best way to go. Uh, it probably wouldn't look too kindly on – uh, programs uh, that they're affiliated <laughs> with, you know, such as GLAD yeah, and yeah. Uh, 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 avoiding stopping uh, violence against women and, and all that. So it probably wouldn't work out. But uh, very interesting right there. Who, who knows? But there's a lot that can happen. Uh, I definitely want to pick your brain uh, on this and we'll get ready to wrap it up for tonight. Um, what has been your takeaway from some of the things that you've been seeing with WWE Hall of Famer Sonny. I mean, this is like the sixth time now that Homegirl has gotten uh, arrested. Uh, she had uh, sat in jail over the weekend, $100,000 uh, bond or whatever like that. Uh, she had arraignment on Monday. Uh, it's really not looking good right now. Uh, of course, one of the times that she had um, got out on bond, um, she quickly had race to Facebook to tell everybody that she was getting married and you know not one person and I could actually remember this because I was actually reading what everybody was saying you know not one person sat up and said you know hey um, you know it's nice that you're trying to do something positive but you know don't really think that's the right move you should be making right now instead you should be kicking back and you should be trying to get help it's obvious you got some demons in you and um, you know she has built a notorious reputation diamond for uh, no calling, uh, no showing uh, events, uh, appearances on radio shows. Um, you know, you, you just hear what's going on with her, and your heart just breaks. You know, especially if you you, you grew up in the WWF Attitude Era, and you you remember her, and you, you just hear what all has been happening with her. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just you know, you probably share the same sentence, but I, I just want to pick your brain on, you know, this crazy mess we've been seeing with her dealing with this. Whoever this young guy is is definitely a boy. Uh, what's his name? Damian Darling. Go ahead, go, go ahead, Diamond. Diamond, Diamond. Diamond, you there? Diamond, you having technical difficulties? Let's try this again. Uh, Diamond, you there? I'm here. All right. Could you hear anything I said? Could you hear anything I said? Okay, I'm sorry. You weren't even on mute. That's the beautiful thing. Okay. Well, I, a, I got a mute on my headset here, too. So, uh, yeah, that's me. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead. 
All right. Yeah, th- th- see, this is this is probably just saying the uh, San Francisco fans uh, that are making my uh, headset. Uh, I'm working with a new headset here and uh need some uh getting used to it. Oh man, I hope the lights don't go out. Oh man. Absolutely. <laughs> the shield. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh you know, what do you think as far as the shield? Do you, do you think that this is something that can can go forward uh you know with the you know the uh, interaction with Brad Maddox uh which I enjoyed actually. Um you think that they're bring another guy in, they're going to you know, break off a guy, uh, maybe turn the baby face, what, what you, end it completely. Is, is, is Ryberg just going to plow through everybody? Ryback, I'm sorry. <laughs> Ryberg. <laughs> let me let me think about let me Let me think about that. Did you hear the Sonny question? No. You didn't hear the Sonny question? At all. Whoa! Well, let me let me repeat that again in a nutshell. Basically, we see that you know she got arrested, you know, for a sixth time. She was in jail over the weekend, and yeah, you know, I it, saw that. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's just so heartbreaking when you think about it, because you know, especially when you grew up watching her in the Attitude Era, you, you think about how far along she's come now, and you know, unfortunately, she's kind of built a little bit of a negative reputation as far as. Uh, bookings go. She no calls, no shows, events. Uh, doesn't appear on radio shows when she's supposed to. Um, right. You know, it, it just seems like this is one of those tragic stories where you can't help but compare her to China. And, you know, you're kind of wondering which one's going to go out first. You know, what, what's been your take on uh, seeing the uh, saga with uh, some wrestling fans have been describing Sonny as uh, as the new Lindsay Lohan of wrestling. And that's not a good thing. Um, I mean, it's it, it's it's really. I mean, it's sad on one degree, but uh, I mean, on the other on the other hand, it's just. Uh, I mean, that's just what she's become. Uh, they were able to hide it a lot easier when she was, you know, in her prime, so to speak. Um, I think that she's she's like uh, bitter, and um, you know, I think that uh, she really needs help. And uh, a couple of times, I think that she was actually going to some type of uh, to rehab, but um, it obviously did not uh, not not work. I mean, if I rem- remember correctly, you know, she's got like uh, you know four or five arrests in in 2012. Right. Uh, so you know, this I think she's just um, you know continuing with her trend from last year. She's going to. Um, until she dies to get better, she's going to continue to be the same way she is. I mean, if Jake the Snake has got himself together, there's no reason why she can't. That boy look good too, Jake the Snake. Man, he right, right. He has really trimmed it down. I mean, you know, whether or not he could continue to stay healthy, I mean, it's a different story. But he definitely seems to be taking it very seriously. He's definitely on the right track there. You know, do you think with Seeing how everything has been transpiring with Sonny, do you think this is now going to kind of give WWE second thoughts on trying to extend that invitation out to people they would like to see into the Hall of Fame? Because, you know, seeing all this, it wouldn't actually surprise me if personnel's kind of going, man, I, I wish we didn't induct her because she's up to the same old crap. Well, I mean, I, you know, uh, I think that that really makes a difference. I mean, I think that when you induct them in, if they're fine, then 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 so be it. I mean, you know, you, you can't babysit these people, so it's just it. You know, when, the time when you need them to be in and they're clean, then that's that's all you can do. Um, and if they fall back off the wagon, uh, then they fall off the wagon. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, if you look at let's look at X Pac, let's look at uh, Road Dog, let's look at Billy Gunn. All of them have had issues. Uh, you know, uh, and they've been, you know, they've been back, uh, and they're, you know, they're all doing okay, uh, you know, in legends, uh, training, you know, what have you. Uh, but if they were to fall off the wagon, then, I mean, you know, they'll be cut, cut, you know, cut loose or whatever. But, I mean, Scott Hall, I, I don't see Scott Hall. I, that's why I don't, I don't really see the NWO going in um, anytime soon. I, I think the NWO could possibly go in. I think that's probably the only way that you would get Scott Hall in. Uh but if unless he cleans himself up to the point to accept the award, he won't be going in anywhere. 
before anybody asks, I, I, you know, we definitely need to put it out there because, unfortunately, Bruno San Martino's induction was overshadowed as we just had that core uh, wrestling audience that just quickly said, well, if he can get in, what about Macho Man Randy Savage? And I think when you compare them, yeah. they're, they're really, you, you really can't compare. Bruno is is just of a higher standard, a higher quality, um, you know, pure freaking wrestling in my book um, you know two different eras but you know just, just to acknowledge it do you, do you think it could possibly happen somewhere down the road definitely uh, if Bruno went in anybody can get in Bruno was the most vocal against WWE uh, that I've heard if, if, if the hitman went in anybody can go in uh, whatever happened with the Macho Man, I mean, and, and of course the rumors, um, the rumors that I've always heard has been some some type of uh, interaction with Stephanie or something to that degree. Uh, if that did happen, I mean, you know, whatever. You know, the man is deceased. Okay, so what? Yeah. I mean, what else can we? You know, the man's deceased. She's married to Triple H. Whatever happened, I don't know. It could have been consensual for all we know. Um, so, you know, I don't know. But I, I think that if Bruno went in, Bret Hart went in, he can go in. There, there's there's only two people that I can see that are not going to go in that could pop, that, you know. And the only two people that I could see that's not going to go in would be Owen Hart and Chris Benoit. Anybody yeah. else can go in. Yeah. Let's add China to that list, too. You think China? You know what? I don't know about that. I, I don't. I think that China could go in. I don't know. There's too much There's too much history there. You know, it's kind of like that bad that bad girlfriend, you know. I still love you, Hunter. You know, it's, I don't, you know. <laughs> that was a, that was a big know. good China right there. <laughs> you know. <laughs> You know, I don't, I don't want to see that happen, man. No, no, I think there's just too much history. It's, it's like, it, it could happen if she would just clean up her act. I honestly, I think if she wasn't associated with the porn industry, you know, she, she probably would have went in, especially if her approach to the WWE would have been that of one a little bit more cleaner, you know, a little bit more friendlier, you know, not like yeah. literally begging WWE to bring her back into the company or whatever. And I mean, honestly, you know, she kind of blew her, her chances. I mean, a lot of people, they may take a little knock at TNA Wrestling. They may want to try to compare brands. But in my eyes, at least, she had her opportunity to get things right on the good foot when she had hooked up with TNA Wrestling. And, you know, once they found out she was hooked up with porn, it was like, nah, 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 you're, you're going by. You know, so I, I just don't see her going in, unfortunately. Um I don't know. You were talking about the shield there. I uh, had a little bit of time to think about that. I'll say this. I think with John Cena, I think it's good that the way things played out Monday night, I think it's good that it didn't end up being a case where, oh, my God, it's John Cena. It looks like he's going to be doing just like he did with Nexus. He's going to take it, you know, take the group out by himself. You know, I, I, I yeah. really love the fact that they had got uh, Sheamus and they got right back involved in that. And uh, latest update for those of you that didn't hear, as it was revealed, I believe, uh, in WWE uh, Active or in an exclusive WWE.com interview, uh, cameras caught up with John Cena, and apparently he issued a challenge to The Shield to take him on uh, at Elimination Chamber. So I am strongly led to believe that we're finally going to see our three-on-three uh, tag match. I only wish Randy Orton uh, would be a part of that. And uh, I think what Brad Maddox had did by sacrificing himself, um, you know, I think that was probably his way of uh, trying to get in good uh, with the other WWE superstars. It would, actually wouldn't even surprise me, Diamond, if uh, we might see John Cena maybe try to go up to Vicky Guerrero and uh, say, you know, look, uh, he helped us, you know, when we needed it the most. Uh, he helped us get our hands on the shield, you know, give him a chance, you know, offer him a contract. So I really uh, wouldn't be too surprised if we see uh, Maddox uh, become a official WWE uh, wrestler as of next Monday night. 
Yeah, definitely. Uh, I don't have a problem with that. I think he has a lot of potential. Yes, it's, it's taken me a while to get used to the way he cuts promos because it's like I have to keep reminding myself that he's sounding that way on purpose, you know, because you, you say to yourself, why does this guy even have a microphone? <laughs> you know, he sucks the way he's just dragging out his words, and, you know, you're you're kind of like, oh, you, you know, this is how he's, you know, he's doing it like this on purpose. And, yeah, I like it. It's like a cocky little Eric kid. I like him. I know why they probably are going with him. I mean, he looks so, so like Ken Dow. It's not even funny. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. Um, all yeah. you need him to do, all you gotta do is just put on that Eric Bischoff music and have him come out in his little, little black letter jacket. You know, just have him come on out. I'm back. You know, just <laughs> 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 you know, Eric Bischoff Jr. All the way. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All, all the way. Well, guys, I think that's that's pretty much it. I, I think we uh, did pretty good tonight for our first show together. You had some fun tonight. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, this was pretty fun, and uh, we're going to be talking TNA Wrestling this Thursday night. Uh, Join us. It's going to be Impact Showdown Radio. If you're on the East Coast, that means you're going to be able to catch us immediately after the conclusion of Impact Live, and it looks like they're going to be giving us another solid episode as they continue to air them from the U.K. Um, I believe they're going to have their last two, uh, maybe three, UK episodes out of the way, uh, I would think, before the end of this month. I'm not really sure. Uh, big moments right there. Um, I can't wait to talk TNA. Of course, we saw uh, Wes Briscoe, Gary Bischoff. That was a no-brainer right there. Two newest members of Aces and Eights. That should be interesting. Uh, in no itself. surprise there. Yeah, yeah, you know, no surprise there. Definitely, I'm just going to tease it right there because we definitely need to go a little bit more uh, in-depth about that. Talk of wrestling, it does not end here. Good folks, be sure to hit us up at Infinity One Productions for all the latest and wrestling-related news, so much more. Be kind, rewind. Missed out on all your favorite episodes. Check us out on the iTunes, Zoom, Marketplaces. Just use the keywords, the RCWR Show. And uh, if you ever want to interact with us, uh, shoot us a wrestling question or whatever, you know, just feel free to hit us up. Twitter, Facebook, Infinity One Prod, Infinity One Productions. And uh, Diamond, let them know how they can interact with you if they want to shoot you with a question. Absolutely. Um, At the Diamond K Show uh, on Twitter and on Facebook. And uh, I think that's uh, pretty much going to do it. Go ahead, plug away, man. You know what plugs you want to put out there? Go ahead. Uh, well, I mean, the main the main way, uh, Twitter, um, like I said, at the Diamond K Show. Also, I'm on uh, Ustreamradio.com. Um, yeah, definitely looking forward to uh, every Tuesday, 11 p.m., uh, you know, like you said, on the East Coast, and um, Thursday, 10 p.m., right here, uh, talking wrestling and much more. All right, he's the one and only Diamond K. Diamond, it was fun. I know we're going to be talking right on up until Thursday night. I'll probably uh, hit you up with a with an email because I'm usually up remixing, so I'll probably hit you up uh, after the show is over. A uh, great blast, man! Can't wait to do this again Thursday night. Absolutely, looking forward right, to bro. it. All right, bro. All right, bro. Well, have a good right. night, man. You rest up good. You, you as well. All right, thanks, bro. All right, see ya. All right, all right now. All right, one and only Diamond K. I hope you guys appreciated that. New show, new era, new co-host. I want to just let you guys know before we go off the air, and I definitely wanted to put this out there. I had a couple of commercials I wanted to play for you guys, uh, but we're kind of running out of show time, so I'm not going to do that. Instead, I want to go out strong. I want to go out on a high note, and I want to send my condolences uh, to uh, somebody I actually uh, used to have a uh, lot of admiration uh, for, uh, one of my favorite musicians. Uh, he was part of uh, the band The Trogs. Of course, they're uh, famous for singing Wild Thing. And uh, the singer, lead singer, Rick Presley, uh, he actually had died uh, yesterday. Uh, he died from cancer. Uh, and uh looks like it had played a large part uh, in some recent strokes that he had. And uh, Wild Thing, you know, it was famously remixed, uh, remastered uh, by Jimi Hendrix. He, You know, he had his own great rendition of that song. 
Uh, but the Trogs is what really had set it up. And if you're not familiar with the Trogs, uh, then you do not know your British rock music. They came in at a time where the Rolling Stones and the Beatles came in, all part of that whole British invasion there. And uh, once again, uh, Reg Presley uh, died at the age of 71. That's going to be it. We will see you guys this Thursday night for Impact Showdown Radio at 10 p.m. Eastern right here on Blog Talk Radio. And as always, for the One Diamond K, uh, for everybody here, you all be safe and be kind to one another, folks. That's going to do it, and we will see you later. Everybody take care.